42. Consider the reaction shown below. Predict the products of the reaction. Now we're going to work on other reaction examples, not just this one, but I wanted to do it one at a time. So how can we find the products of this reaction? First, we need to determine which molecule is going to be the broncillary acid and which one is going to be the broncillary base. To do that, we need to know the pKa values of these acids. So on the left, we have phenol. On the right, we have methanol. The pKa of phenol, we know it's about 10. For methanol, it's 15.5. So phenol is more acidic than methanol because it has a lower pKa value. It's the stronger acid. So phenol is going to act as the broncillary acid. It's going to be the proton donor. Methanol is going to behave as the broncillary base. It's going to be the proton acceptor. So now we need to draw the curved arrows to show the flow of electrons in order to predict the products. So the base is going to be like the nucleophile. The arrows are going to point from the lone pair to the hydrogen. Now, when this bond breaks, where would those electrons go? Are they going to go towards the oxygen or the hydrogen? They're going to go towards the element that is more electronegative. In this case, that is oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So when that bond breaks, these electrons go back to the O. So we're going to get the conjugate base of phenol, which is phenoxide. And it's going to have a negative charge. We're going to add the hydrogen to methanol, giving us the conjugate acid of methanol. So anytime you take away a hydrogen, you're going to create the conjugate base. When you add a hydrogen, you're going to get the conjugate acid. And basically, we've completed part C. Identify the broncillary acid and base as well as the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. The conjugate acid is the acid on the right. The conjugate base is going to be the base on the right side. The broncillary acid and base, that's going to be on the left side of the reaction. So far, we finished part A, B, and C. Part D, predict the position of equilibrium. Is the reaction reactant favored or product favored? What would you say? In order to figure this out, we need to look at the pKa values of the broncillary acid and the conjugate acid. So what is the pKa of a protonated methanol? If you recall, it's around negative 2. Now, comparing these two acids, which one is stronger and which one is weaker? The stronger acid has the lower pKa. The weaker acid has the higher pKa. The position of equilibrium, reactions tend to proceed in a way such that they create more stable products. Think of a ball rolling down a hill. The ball wants to go down to a lower energy state, a state that's more stable. The ball won't naturally go up the hill to something that's less stable or to a less stable position, unless you apply energy, of course. So things naturally tend to go down the energy profile. So objects tend to go from a high energy state to a low energy state. That's the general trend. So this reaction is going to proceed in a direction that produces the more stable acid. The more stable acid is less reactive. It has less potential energy. In other words, the more stable acid, the less reactive acid is the weaker acid. So it's going to go to the side with the weaker acid. And the weaker acid is on the left side. So this reaction is reactant favored. Here we have separation of charges. So that's a good indication that it's probably not going to be product favored. 
even though that's not always the case, there are exceptions, but we're creating a very reactive strong acid and even a relatively significant base. So if we were to put phenol and methanol in solution, less than 1% will be in this form. More than 99% of the molecules will be in this form. But a small amount will react to create these products. But it's going to be very, very small. Now let's move on to the second example. So we should probably start with the first half of part C. Let's identify the brosillary acid and a brosillary base. So here we have an alkoxide ion. It's the conjugate base of an alcohol. And here we have a thiol. We know the pKa of a thiol. It's 10. Now, because this has a negative charge, it's most likely to act as the brosillary base. The thiol is most likely to act as a brosillary acid. I mean, like, if you think about how else we can do this, there really isn't another way. I mean, for the sulfur to act as a base and to take off this hydrogen, that's likely not to, not going to happen. So it's safe to assume that this is going to be the brosillary base. It wants to get a hydrogen, and this has a hydrogen to give away, so that's going to be a brosillary acid, the proton donor. So let's draw the curve arrows to show the flow of electrons. So we're going to start from base to acid. And when this bond breaks, hydrogen has an electro electronegativity value of 2.1. Sulfur is 2.5. So sulfur is more electronegative than hydrogen. So when the SH bond breaks, those electrons will go to the sulfur atom. We're going to get the conjugate acid, cyclohexanol and the conjugate base of the thiol, which will look like this. So this is the conjugate acid, this is the conjugate base. Now the pKa for cyclo cyclohexanol is 18. So far, We've completed part A. We've predicted the products of the reaction. We got cyclohexanol and the conjugate base of the thiol. We drew the curve arrows to show electron flow. And we've identified the brosillary acid and base as well as the conjugate acid and base. So now we need to predict the position of equilibrium. We need to determine if the reaction is product favored or reaction favored. So what we need to do is compare the pKa of the brosillary acid and the conjugate acid. So this pKa is lower, which means this is the stronger acid, this is the weaker acid. The reaction is going to shift towards the more stable, less reactive, weaker acid. So that means it's product favored. To show that it's product favored, instead of having one arrow, we would show two arrows. But we're going to have a bigger arrow to the right, a small arrow to the left. So the big arrow tells us the position of equilibrium. That is, it's further to the right. Now the difference in the sizes of the two arrows relates to the difference in the pKa values.